Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video today, and today we're actually going to be breaking down the latest of the Pokemon Unite patch, basically timed perfectly with the mobile release. And this is a special discussion here because I've actually got two of the other members of the Team Shiny Esports team, which I didn't really talk a ton about on YouTube yet, but we formed an Esports team. We just competed in the tournament. We came in second place out of 68 teams. It was awesome. But I'm really excited about it because they're going to be on this call with me while we're doing this live on Twitch. And we're going to talk about all the patches that, that are going to be taking place for the mobile launch. And we're going to talk about how this is going to impact the metagame, which Pokemon you should look out for, how this could change the tournament scene moving forward. And uh, it's just going to be a good time. So I'd like you guys to meet if you guys haven't seen them on my live streams at twitch.tv slash adrive. We've got uh, Heat, the beatboxing champion on the call. Yo, yo. Well, you, you, you got to do a beatbox real quick. I got it. All right. There it is. This guy's legit. He was the Canadian beatboxing champion in what, 2016? Yes, sir. Oh my God, I remembered that. And of course, it goes without saying, we've got the support champion himself. Feppy is here on the call as well. What's up, Feppy? Yo, I'm glad to be here. Excited to bring, uh, bring my experience in the support role in. I think this is going to be great. So obviously this is three of the five members that are making up the Team Shiny Esports team. I'll, I'll give you guys more info or information on that over the coming days and weeks here on YouTube. But I'm going to just jump into a private match with Absol and we'll kind of start talking about Absol, which is the first Pokemon that, that's getting adjusted here because there's a ton of Pokemon that have gotten buffs and nerfs and we, we've got a, a bit of a breakdown from the Japanese patch notes so we can kind of deduce some of this information. So. The first thing we're looking at is Absol, and, and I'll actually let uh, Heat kind of jump on Absol and talk a little bit about these changes to both Night Slash and Sucker Punch, and how you think that's going to factor in with Absol. Yeah, for sure. Just give me a sec. I'm going to pull up the uh, the actual patch notes here so I can have a direct reference. Um, but ultimately, Absol is a, a really cool character, and I think um, Absol is getting slightly tuned more to what it looked like in Canadian Open Beta, actually. Um, We've got a little bit of a buff uh, coming in, in terms of cooldown reduction. I know Night Slash is getting, I think, a nerf in the realm of the AoE it's actually hitting when it lands, but the cooldown reduction is really big for Absol. So it lets people, or it lets Absol glue to people a lot more efficiently. Believe it or not, it lets people score with Absol more efficiently, right? Because you have less cooldowns on your, your dash ins and dash outs to score in gold points. And it's looking like it'll uh, it'll reflect a little bit more of what we saw during uh, beta, where Absol was probably the top best here. And uh, I I'm I'm sad to see they didn't bring in some sort of you know ultimate buff or something like that, something that gave it a little more damage or a little more impact. But otherwise, this should be a really good change. It should probably bring Absol out of you know the bottom tier and somewhere into C tier, B tier, low B tier, something like that. And at this point in the game, we've seen kind of Absol go from being what a lot of people were running in jungle. Now it's kind of almost become like more of a lane threat just because a lot of other Pokemon kind of run that role more significantly. And I know Team Shiny here has, has tested around with some Absol. Do you think that Absol has any place in the metagame with these changes to Sucker Punch and Night Slash? Yeah, I think um, Absol already had some place in the metagame. I mean, the reason you're seeing it in lane right now is because it's a really effective uh, counterplay to the three bot strat we're seeing really often because Absol's smiting is really good and it can dish out a lot of damage on some lucky RNG. I actually, I think as of right now, Timmy's nerfing a lot of the, the junglers or the current meta junglers, right? Like Krillin just taking a huge hit. Uh, Cinder already took a huge hit and I think the goal is they're trying to get speedsters back into the jungle. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think Blastoise will still be a little bit too strong and I'm sure we'll get there later, but for now, I think it's a it's a good change. It's a welcome change, and we should see a little bit more Absol and a little more competitive, viable Absol. Uh, I'm sure you're aware, but Tune from uh, from uh, Love These has actually been playing around with it in the jungle and seems to be having some pretty good success. So there may be some some top tier play there. Nice. All right. Well, let's uh, that's a, a lot to talk about Absol. Let's actually talk a little bit about uh, Zera Aura, which is the next Pokemon that got some changes. So let me boot him up. All right, cool. So the next Pokemon that uh, is receiving some changes in the update is Zeraora. And Zeraora's changes are actually pretty robust. So the first thing is it's Slash Attack, which I, let me just kind of level them up real quick. Uh, by the way, if you guys don't know, fun fact, you can actually go into a practice match and you can just level up your Pokemon if you want to ever test anything. Makes things nice. Uh, we'll look at Spark and Wild Charge, which are the two things that mainly got buffed. But his Slash Attack is getting a big change, which of course I just canceled out. It's gonna have the reduced amount of attacks done. So when he slashes, he's gonna hit less times, but the amount of damage he has per hit is going to increase. Very, very interesting. So we'll have to see kind of what, once the actual patch hits, how, how the difference is. Like, 
doesn't end up netting out to the same amount of damage when all is said and done but just hits one less time or what is the equation going to be there but that's going to potentially change his early game there and then the two biggest things are spark and wild charge uh the period between moves has been increased for spark so when you use spark the uh, i guess the time between using spark is going to be increased i'm not really sure what that what that entails um and it increases the amount of consecutive wild charge attacks while using spark so i'm not sure if you guys have a better understanding of, of what those changes are but we also know that wild charges cooldown is going to be decreased and you're gonna also have damage reduction while using wild charge so that's pretty nuts it's it's gonna be tough to, to justify over discharge but uh do you guys have any sort of insight i don't play Zeraora, so <laughs> yeah in, into um, that yeah i do i think the slash change is really interesting because at least the way i'm reading it and if it converts this way it, it's really powerful is that it does less hits in this, the same amount of time but each hit does more damage and that would effectively make Zerora much more effective at last hitting things in lane or coin flipping for minions in lane right which is really powerful it would make Zerora lane a lot more robust um in terms of spark what they mean is if you if you quick cast spark right now there's no delay between the cast so you can do some really glitchy stuff where you just blink back and forth through people and i think they're trying to remove that that glitchiness um, now, I don't know if Wild Charge will, will be competitive viable just because, again, uh, an AoE, Discharge AoE in, you know, 3,000-something three some, 3, damage in an AoE is very, very, very strong. But the, the concept is while you're, like, let's say you use a Spark, while you're waiting to use your next Spark, you can Wild Charge and Wild Charge will hit more times is what they're saying. And that might be pretty interesting. So I don't know what it really holds in terms of the future of Zera, but I think the changes are really cool and open up a lot of new windows for some cool plays to happen. The, uh, the scary thing about this is that whenever I saw Zerora in lane and I was Wiggly, I just laughed because I just stand on the minion and I just block Slash for free. But now if Slash only does two hits instead of three, that's actually pretty scary because even if he only does like 50% of his damage, it's still really, really big and it's potential to outsmite a Wiggly smite, which we can talk about later too. But Zera might be a very strong laner now. Yeah, exactly. Cool stuff. So we talk about these Pokemon and whether they function better in lane or in jungle. And I think same with Absol. When the game kind of came out, a lot of people looked at Zera as a jungle Pokemon, but it's gotten a lot more use as a laner lately, uh, basically because it hits that kind of first real big power creep at eight and doesn't get its ult till 10, but it's so good in lane because of how strong it is in the early game. Um, and again, you're, you're not going to hit 10 for Dreadnought anyway, whereas a lot of other characters are going to be able to get there. So it's still viable in both, but we're seeing it a lot in lane. So definitely some interesting changes to keep an eye on. I think what we've seen from Unite is that they're, they're often looking at kind of the, the offset for each Pokemon and they're trying to make it more viable. So that way people have more options right now with Zero or you're, you're pretty much always running uh, discharge. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see whether wild charge and, and spark have any sort of viability there outside of like Volt Switch and Discharge once this path drops. All right, so the next Pokemon we're going to discuss here is Charizard, which received a lot of changes. Um, the first one being Fire Punch. Uh, makes a target get burned if you hit multiple targets. So uh, Fire Punch is a pretty good move that allows you to dash forward. You're going to be able to burn those targets if you hit multiple. Flamethrower, uh, the alternative to Fire Punch, is now going to give you increased movement speed after using it. And one of the things that allows Fire Punch to kind of be superior right now is just the fact that you have kind of a dash that you can kind of get in and out of a battle. Um, but we'll, it'll be interesting to see what that movement speed increase is for Charizard and how impactful that will be, whether it can rival the ability to dash like Fire Punch does. Because again, it can often use be as, as a tool to get out of a battle just as much as it is to get into a battle. The thing I'm most excited about after playing Charizard a lot recently is Fire Blast. I've kind of been playing Fire Blast similar to how I use Stealth Rock on Crustal, where you kind of throw it down to farm objectives with Fluffy Tail. And it's actually saying that they're going to have a cooldown decrease. So... Right now, Fire Blast is on, I believe, an 8-second cooldown. So, when you're looking at that as an 8-second cooldown, if they change that to, like, a 6-second cooldown, like, uh, Crustal Stealth Rock, that could actually put Charizard in a position to be similar to what Crustal can do. Not with the same mobility and the same bulk, but a similar approach with being able to use that AoE attack on the ground that allows you to kind of melt different objectives or wild Pokemon. And I had pretty good success yesterday uh, utilizing that on Dreadnought, throwing it down, Fluffy Tailing and then just dealing a ton of damage. Um, and Heat's actually gonna talk a little bit about, cause there's actually some changes for Charizard's Unite move. Uh, looks like they, they changed a few things about that. 
Yeah, and this is this is all up to interpretation, right? But at least based on the Japanese patch notes, it sounds like so. The way the Unite move works right now is you can cast the Unite move, you become uh, unstunnable, you start flying around in an unstoppable state, and you can just attack a bunch of people. And then at any point, you can seismic slam them, and your Unite move ends. It sounds like they're changing it so that your Unite move begins with the seismic slam, where you pick someone up and slam them, and then you get the unstoppable airborne effect, right? And the way that changes things is they're also adding damage, like they're adding attack damage during the Unite move, uh, and they're an inflicting burn with the Unite move still. So it sounds like it'll be more of an engage. You walk in, you alt somebody, they flip, and that's your engage to a fight versus just, you know, going off to pick people. And that, that kind of changes how Charizard plays in terms of how he feels at a team comp, right? I don't know what that's going to bring in the grand scheme of things. I just know that that's a massive, that's the first time they've massively overhauled the core mechanics of a, like a, a move in the game at all. So I'm excited to see what it'll look like. Yeah, imagine like running into a team fight and just like ulting into a Blastoise so he can't ult the Dreadnought or something, you know what I mean? Like just exactly. taking him out of the equation right away um, and then being able, I, I actually really like that because when you're, if that is what the change is and you're right, that's, that's a new precedent for them almost completely reworking a Unite move in a way um potentially changing a lot of how charizard can play with that unite move because the way it stands now is you you know you unite move you're flying in the sky uh you're getting that life steal and then you have to time whenever you want to do that seismic slam but if you time it too late you don't get to use it if you time it too early then you kind of waste some of your unite move so it'll be very interesting to see what those changes to charizard bring but i have a feeling this buff could put charizard on the map a little bit so i'm definitely going to be uh getting my charizard gameplay in tomorrow that's for sure <laughs> absolutely yeah, it's it, it's very interesting because uh, Charizard is a lot more of an individualistic mentality right now, where he just kind of like runs it down at an enemy and they try to run away and then you kill them. And you don't really, like sometimes you get the value out of the stun, but not always. But now the stun could just be the initiation for the team. You can just stun a target and then you can burn the back line while the front liner is stunned and you're CC chaining them so they can't do anything about it. So this actually exactly. is a major change. Uh, for the competitive scene as well. This could be a huge deal. Love yeah, it. and Charizard already is on the brink of, I've always called him on the brink of, if they buff him a little too much, he'll be broken, right? And I think this might be one of those situations where they're adding a bunch of attack to his Unite move post flip, so you get attack for your next follow-up attacks. Uh, he already has his crit damage boost if enemies are burned. There's a good potential that any time a Charizard is united, he just, he just explodes people, right? So yeah. it'll be interesting to see. One thing too, before we wrap up on Charizard, the last thing I want to mention is the notes do say that the Seismic Slam cooldown is increased. So I wonder if that means that it's going to take longer to get his Unite move. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, probably. Um, because he has because the fastest we see that Unite Charizard move in the game right now. Yeah. You, you get them in like 30, 45 seconds of real game time. Yeah, so right? we'll have to see so. how that plays out. But we're going to move forward to the next starter Pokemon here in just a second, and that is Venusaur. So uh, Venus is very interesting right now because He's actually getting a buff to underutilized talents. Uh, Giga Drain is not really used very often because Sludge Bomb just increases the damage of your Solar Beam. But uh, Giga Drain's a very good anti divers tool. Think of like, you know, we just talked about Charizard who wants to like run it down at people. Venu with Giga Drain can tank Charizard for a very long time. And they also increased the damage reduction on uh, Giga Drain, which is insane. So, uh, that just means that he's extremely tanky. Now, we talked about Venu maybe not being super tanky. He's now very tanky. And this is going to be a big deal. And Pedal Dance got a ton of changes. So, Pedal Dance uh, increases... Yeah, they got an increase in damage. It has a lower cooldown. And it has more move speed. And it la the move speed maybe even lasts for longer, is what the patch notes say. And all of these changes are huge because one of the things that people don't know about Pedal Dance, because it's not actually mentioned, is that Pedal Dance reduces the cooldown of Giga Drain. That is so correct. you can Giga Drain and then Pedal Dance and then Giga Drain again. And you can just run into the enemies and just tank all of the damage. So like main tank Venu might actually be a thing. Which is really scary to think about. You just tank all the damage and run into the enemies with Pedal Dance. Yeah. This could be a very, very big change. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. And I think the biggest thing you mentioned there that a lot of people don't know already exists is the Pedal Dance and the Giga Drain. So every time that Pedal Dance hits an enemy Pokemon, not a wild Pokemon, it does reduce the cooldown by Giga Drain of, of a little bit. And you can end up like getting in a fight and within a few seconds spam like multiple Giga Drains pretty quickly. And if you're decreasing the amount of damage you're taking, plus healing off a Giga Drain, 
plus chipping them away with Petal Dance, plus increasing your movement speed, there's actually a, a solid chance that Venusaur could be decent. So I'm really excited about it. Obviously, he's got his role right now as uh, you know a really good objective stealer with Solar Beam and you know being able to hit that AOE effect with with Sludge Bomb. But I think that there's definitely a world where Petal Dance, Giga Drain, Venusaur could have some uh, viability and competitive, and I am all here for that because that is a character that I would love to play more for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I also think about the fact they're raising the damage and that'll multiply into Energy Amp, right? So right now, if you run Energy Amp Venu and you ultimate, then use Petal Dance, you're doing a ton, like you're talking above zero aura levels of damage in an AoE. And if you then buff Petal Dance, which then multiplies into Energy Amp even more, if this is going to be a lot of damage post alt. It should shred three, four people in the three team fight. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, and we didn't even talk objectives, right? I've got this Dreadnought here, and I can just kind of hit him with this uh, Petal Dance, but this could be another situation where you could even throw a Fluffy Tail on this bad boy and, you know, be able to shred bees or other objectives like Rotom and Dreadnought very quickly if the damage increased on Petal Dance is significant. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, but uh, definitely, definitely positive things. I, I really like the fact that they've made a lot of tweaks to some of these Pokemon that maybe aren't as meta you know, relevant right you now. Win. So we're going to talk about one of the top attack damage carries in the game, and that is Cinderace coming up next. All right, so we've got uh, Cinderace here, which has some some big changes, and I'll let Heat jump on this. Uh, the two big changes uh, coming to Pyroball and Flame Charge, which are the two lesser used options for, for Cinderace. Oftentimes, Cinderace elects to take Blaze Kick and Faint from Ability. So I'll let you guys talk a little bit about uh, Pyroball, Flame Charge, and what we think those those changes look like. Yeah, the crazy thing is I actually think Flame Charge is more popular than Faint since the last round of Faint nerfs. So I'm surprised they're targeting Flame Charge for a buff. Um, so what's really cool is, I mean, not really cool, I suppose, more of a, the past nerfs are that they lowered Cinderace's base attack down in hopes to reduce people using Blaze Kick and taking Pyro Ball, but people still prefer Blaze Kick. So I think they're buffing Pyro Ball so that the, the moveset starts to see more even selection. I think Pyro Ball is already really strong. It's a great smiting tool. It does a lot of damage. So I think uh, in a situation where you have Pyro Ball buffed, now you have a smiting tool for objectives that isn't your ultimate. I think that's really good. Flame Charge on its boosted state gives you attack speed for a short period of time. It gives you like an attack speed steroid. So I think reducing the cooldown of that will see almost snowball-esque effects, right? Because if you can Flame Charge more often, you're in your attack speed steroid more often. Therefore, you're just pumping more damage. And I definitely think, I mean, we'll get to Greninja later, but I think Cinderace is easily replacing Greninja in that, that jungle role. Now, I do think they're both competing against Blastoise, and it's interesting that they're boosting Cinderace because Cinderace counters Blastoise in a way, just because Cinder can do so much damage to Blastoise in a quick period of time. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think they're really welcome changes. I think Cind Cinderace was a bit low after the last round of nerfs for the role they were in. They just weren't getting selected competitively, so I'm glad to see it happen. Yeah, we'll see also a couple bug fixes on Cinderace, including its Blazing Bicycle Kick, which is its ultimate uh, Unite move, and also some bug fixes to Blaze. So we'll see what those turn into in terms of gameplay, but the more offset for Cinderace getting buffed, and I think you're gonna see a lot more uh, Pyro Balls over those high jump kicks. So we'll have to see. That may change kind of how Cinderace plays in general, but um, more competition in the, in the jungle role, especially with the changes to Greninja, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But up next, we're gonna talk a little bit about Talon Flame. All right, so the next Pokemon we're looking at is Talonflame. Uh, Talonflame, one of the speedsters of the game and has really good burst potential in terms of how it can kind of jump into a battle and engage. Fully evolves at level seven, which is super nice. Grabs the Unite move at level nine. Very strong Pokemon, but very frail in the context of kind of how it functions in the game, but very fast, great mobility. And what they're changing about is they're actually increasing its attack. How much they're increasing its attack? I don't know, but that could be pretty nuts. And then they're also making some changes to Fly, which is one of its kind of off picks. Right now, Brave Bird kind of takes the cake right now. Um, generally, I, I personally think Brave Bird Aerial Ace is really good because there's a nice combination you can use where you can uh, Aerial Ace, Brave Bird, Aerial Ace, and kind of get that reset with the basic attack. But Fly is kind of insane. So they're going to be increasing the movement speed in the air, and uh, they're also going to decrease the cooldown. So the cooldown is going to be reduced. So that means you'll be able to fly more frequently and fly faster. And we know fly is actually one of the best objective stealers in the game because of just how you can kind of get out of battle, be basically immune, fly over different walls and things like that, and then kind of land down on the uh, on the objective like a Dreadnought or a Zapdos and potentially smite it or steal it. So we'll have to see how this plays out. This could actually make, uh, this could actually make Talonflame pretty good. And then they actually made its Unite Technique Gauge more easily chargeable. So I don't know what that means outside of the fact that maybe he gets his unite move a little faster 
um, which also could be pretty nuts, especially in the late game where you see people running like the goal getter, you know, uh, buddy barrier, score shield, talent flames, where they kind of just ult and then get 100 in easily because they they have all that kind of teched out for the late game. Um, but yeah, that I, that that's the thoughts on talent flame, man. I think this. It could be very interesting, man. It's it's a really strong Pokemon with the right team comp. It needs a lot of bulk in front of it, and it needs to be able to get into fights and then get out of fights pretty quickly. But uh, other than that, I think I think Talonflame might actually be legit. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. the attack stat increase on Talonflame is huge too, right? Because the the fly scales 255% off of your attack. And if they boost the attack enough, I mean, Fly already outs my power up punch uh, early on in the game, like pre-level 11. And now the nerfs to power up punch plus the buffs to Talonflame attack and the buffs to Fly might just flat out make Talonflame the best smiter in the game other than like the Blastoise ult, right? And that's what we're looking for. And that's one of the things I love that we're seeing is a lot of these Pokemon getting adjustments to make them more viable. So that way, hopefully we'll see like a little bit more diversity in terms of the Pokemon pool that people are choosing uh, in game. Um, but yeah, we'll jump to the next Pokemon, which is a pretty quick one. I'm actually just gonna leave Talonflame on the screen for this one and let Feppy talk about it. There's some Garchomp changes uh, coming and they're, they're very simple, but they could make a big deal for Garchomp. Yeah, so Garchomp got a couple of defensive stat increases. Both his defenses and his special defense have increased. Uh, depending on how much that is, it could be very scary because Garchomp already heals off of his autos in the late game. And increasing his defenses just makes him even more scary. He's used as a he's often used as a counter pick to people that rotate five man dread fights in competitive play. I mean you run Garch on top lane, you just let him farm and then he just wins the late game for you. And these defense increases actually makes him a lot more viable and survivable in lane. Which could be a huge change. And then the rough skin passive change, uh what basically they adjusted. Uh, how many times it can proc. There's actually no indication whether or not it was buffed or nerfed. So we'll have to we'll have to look and wait on that one. But I don't... I have never really been too particularly interested in his passive. It, it kind of seems like a, a leftover thing at the end to me. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah, but those defense buffs can make a huge difference. Especially if they function throughout the entirety of its line. Uh, when it's a Gibble and Gabite. Especially since how, how weak they can be early lane. Um, so we'll have to see how Garchomp plays out, but, uh, may make it a little bit more viable for sure. But, uh, the biggest, probably the biggest change right now is, is actually up next. And that is Greninja. Uh, Greninja has kind of been the premier Pokemon in the game right now. Um, there's a few Pokemon that stand out above the rest. You could say Lucario and Wigglytuff. And I think a lot of people would include Greninja in that conversation. Uh, just being kind of the elite jungler right now. It's incredible, uh, ability to get in and out of fights, surf with the... The healing and the being able to kind of reset your surfs and there's just a lot going for Greninja, but Greninja's getting some massive nerfs. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about those. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a long list. He's getting a couple buffs in the process too. I don't know if you noticed, but he's getting a nerf to his HP and he's already one of the squishiest characters in the game, uh, which will just make him practically explode if he gets caught very positionally dependent, right? He's getting a nerf to his attack, so he's doing less damage output overall. He's getting less of an attack boost during Torrent, which is when he's under 50% health. He gets bonus damage. They're reducing how much that bonus is. And as a as a swap for that, they're, they're fixing his Water Shuriken so he continues to maintain his attack speed buff throughout the Water Shuriken cast. And they're giving him a reduced cooldown on his ultimate. I don't think the changes to his ult into Water Shuriken are going to be enough to bounce him back from the nerfs he just got. But it's uh, I definitely think he's being replaced by Cinderace in the, in the current meta based on the Cinder changes. Any, uh, yeah, any thoughts, it, yeah. yeah, the changes are really interesting because the HP decrease, oddly enough, is is not as bad of a nerf as you would think because that means Greninja is more likely to be in Torrent, especially top level Greninjas. You just have to take less damage to get into Torrent, which is huge, but they counterbalance that by reducing the attack boost of Torrent. So it, it does seem overall like a pretty big nerf to this character. It, it could Greninja still could be viable, but I'm going to be honest, I don't want to be surfed as Eldegoss ever again, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> <laughs> one other one other last bit of information is they're actually going to be changing uh, the uh, gauge, how fast its Unite move charges. It seems like they're going to allow him to charge his Unite move faster. Uh, that's what the text seems to say. So you may see more, uh, you know, of his water burst shurikens coming out a little faster than normal with with Greninja. Um, so maybe he's able to get a full three off in a game as opposed to two or 
or something like that. So we'll see how, how much they tweak that, but uh, more shurikens, which, I mean, it's a really good tool for stealing objectives and obviously very good for first dreadnought. So again, uh, Cinderace may take back the crown as the number one jungler, but we'll have to kind of see how everything plays out. Those nerfs to its attack stat and to its, uh, you know, its its HP could, could prove to be pretty damaging for, uh, for our froggy friend here. All right, so the next Pokemon we're gonna talk about is Wigglytuff, and Wigglytuff may have the most impactful changes uh, of this balance patch, and I think a lot of people felt that it was much needed that Wigglytuff was gonna get some adjustments, so I am so happy that it's getting adjusted. Feppy, you're our support guy. Tell us about what is going on with Wigglytuff. Well, as the resident Wiggly player, these changes are unfortunately completely justified. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggly is way too strong right now. It's it, I have my fun, but now this hero is going to be a bit more balanced. The biggest change is the special attack decrease for sure. Uh, Wiggly does unfair amounts of damage given that Wiggly usually fills like the tank role in the team. The fact that Wiggly can put out more damage than a Snorlax with Heavy Slam is kind of unfair. So the, that change in and of itself will hopefully help balance Wiggly a bit. And then on top of that, they also reduce the damage of Pound, which is her early game damage ability. Uh, and that's a giant change because one of the reasons why you pick Wiggly is her early game. Her early game is insane. So the, the Wiggly can just straight up 2v1 people in lane all the time with no problems. So the fact that they're nerfing Pound is and her damage might just push Wiggly out of the meta a bit, just because the strongest part of Wiggly is her early game. And then on top of that, Dazzling Gleam got its damage lowered. And Dazzling Gleam was basically always the meta pick because it did more damage than Double Slap until Double Slap hit, like, I think it was five hits is when Double Slap went even with Dazzling Gleam in terms of damage. And also, Dazzling Gleam did its damage instantaneously, so it was a lot better at last hitting objectives. So, Dazzling, like, Double Slap might be the damage pick now, and Dazzling Gleam might be the smiting pick. Like, you need to try and last hit something. And then, one of the other huge changes is actually to Sing. And this is a, actually a global change. This is to every hero with a sleep, so this is a big deal. But, uh, they apparently, characters remaining asleep after they got slept uh before, when they get hit by abilities and attacks was a bug so now if you're asleep and you get hit by any damage you wake up which is actually a gigantic nerf to sing the reason why sing was so strong is because it was a it was a massive aoe sleep that just put everyone to to sleep and they couldn't move for like two seconds that is huge that now they get woken up and sing probably isn't the pick anymore just yeah, because of that. I do want to mention too, and you, you kind of touched on it, Snorlax, we have a small change to Snorlax as well, which we'll just cover right now. It's with Yawn. It's the same concept, right? So when a Pokemon is put to sleep, um, they, if they get hit by any damage, they actually wake up. So that changes how sleep works entirely in this game. And apparently it was a bug. I don't know how it was a bug for this long, but uh, it is what it is. So sleep is way different. I still think Wigglytuff is going to have some viability, but uh, it should yeah. kind of fall out of the uh, the Supreme S plus tier, as we mentioned. And another thing to mention too, is it seems as though it's a uh, cute charm activation gap is reduced. So not really sure what that means, but the cute charm is obviously it's passive. So it looks as though it's going to be nerfed. I, I'm assuming is that what, what that means. Yeah, uh, yes. it changes the distance at which cute charm actuates, right? So you'll have to be closer to Wiggly to prop cute charm with the ability you're hitting. Thank God, because I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm Wiggly right now on my screen and this Audino, I could be over here and it's cute charm. Like, it's <laughs> it's actually yeah. crazy how I I swear I'll be like running and let's pretend this Audino right here is the Wiggly Tub. I'll be running past it. I'll be right here and I just get yanked over to it. It's crazy. So thank goodness, thank goodness that Wiggly is getting those nerfs because it is ridiculous. Rick, rip my pink marshmallow. Goodbye. One pink. of so them. So sad. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next mod we're gonna talk about is Cramorant, and Cramorant gets some pretty significant changes. Uh, for this patch. So the first thing is it's basic boosted. So it's basically the third hit here, which I'll show you guys that one like That one right there is going to have damage increase. So that's gonna increase a little bit of his damage output But we're gonna see surf one of his kind of primary moves that he uses in fact the main meta move for uh, Kremorant is actually getting a damage reduction So the amount of damage that surf is gonna do 
is going to be reduced. Now, that, that alone doesn't really kill Cramorant, I would say. They're going to change Dive a little bit. It looks like the time between moves is going to be reduced, so you can use Dive more frequently, which is probably, you know, that's good for Cramorant and Dive, but no one's really using Dive right now, so they're probably just trying to bring Surf and Dive a little closer to each other. But I think the biggest hit to Cramorant is that his damage is going to be reduced with his Unite move, and I think that it's Unite move. Cramorant has a lot of things going for it, right? And this is a couple times now he's been nerfed. His, his, uh, his early game with Whirlpool is really strong, so that doesn't really change at all, right? But his mid to late game changes significantly with this because he no longer has, well, we presume that his his ultimate, his Unite move is not gonna be nearly as good now. And it was such a good tool for zoning off opposing Pokemon from objective. Like, it's probably the one Unite move, I think, in the game that if you see it, you like have to get out of its 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 path because it can deal so much, unless the whole team's there and you can pile on the cram right away. It's just so crazy strong. So the fact that they're changing the damage on that, I feel like, could put Cram kind of out of the super competitive viability. I think it'll be interesting to see. He's still gonna have that super strong early game, but I'm not convinced that he's gonna have as good of a late game now with his Unite move being nerfed and Surf being damage redu like reduced. But, and, and I never see anyone use Dive, so not really sure how that's gonna play out. I, I am pretty excited for these changes from a competitive perspective because Cram is pretty much only used as an ult bot. And all you did is just farm your ult and then press the ultimate when the enemy team tried to dive you. And they just had to leave or they had to burn through the cram ult or they died. So it actually opens up a lot of interesting uh, things you can do now because you pretty much had the run energy amp, buddy barrier, and like wise glasses on cram because you're just funneling your ult. But now with the dive changes and the basic attack damage boost, there might actually be a situation now where you can open up a new avenue for Cram, or like maybe, like, I don't know, I'm theorizing, but maybe you run like a muscle band dive Cram now. It, it's gonna it's gonna see what happens, uh, obviously, because the big change is uh, the time between moves being reduced for Cram. Uh, what that actually means is you can press dive, like you have three charges of dive, and you can cast your next charge of dive sooner. And one of the big things about dive is that it makes it uh, teleports you, it makes you immune to crowd control. So, Cram might actually be really hard to get to if he has dive and air slash. Yeah, air slash. He might, he might, mobility. yeah, he might actually be a really consistent muscle band abuser, which could be very interesting. But we'll have to see uh, when we actually get our hands on it. All right, so our next Pokemon we're going to talk about is Lucario, another one of the top tier threats in the game. And he happens to be our uh, resident Lucario player. So, Heat, I'll let you go to town on this one. Yes, sir. I mean, my gosh, what a change this is, right? So they're nerfing power up punch damage. We don't know by how much. I imagine they're just nerfing the amount of amplified attack you get on your on your power up punch. And they're, it seems like extremely buffing close combat, right? It seems like close combat's getting a huge buff. Um, I actually, I mean, I, I've, I'm always of the opinion that I think E-Speed, Extreme Speed, which is Lucario's alternate move to Power Up Punch, is a lot stronger in most situations. I think Power Up Punch is better for smiting objectives, but E-Speed in team fights and pretty much anything else is better. So I don't really take this as a big, uh, a big nerf. I, I think this is more so a rebalance to say, okay, well, E-Speed is now more in line with Power Up Punch in terms of selection. I'm hoping they don't absolutely destroy Power Up Punch. But this buff to close combat could be massive. Close combat previously did 2,416 damage over a course of a number of hits and a number of time, right? An amount of time. They have buffed close combat's damage and they've increased the amount of hits close combat does. And they removed the bug that the damage on close combat didn't increase for close combat plus. So effectively, this could end up being the meta Lucario pick, right? Where you go E-speed for mobility and then go close combat. And you just start close combating things when you're in range and then keep E-speeding around. This could actually be a, a really big shift to how Lucario plays, but I still think he'll be the same powerhouse, just with a different moveset. Yeah, Lucario obviously been kind of the one of the biggest threats, especially right now in the metagame where you're, you're running three bottom, and Lucario is really the only Pokemon that I can think of that can hold a, a lane solo so effectively and still be able to put so much pressure on because of his mobility. So these changes to power punch and close combat 
Could keep, as you said, could keep Lucario as one of the top Pokemon in the game. And I, we'll have to see how much of a change it goes to Power Punch. But as you said, I mean, you're running E Speed anyway, so <laughs> it's only good exactly. things for Lucario, right? So and they haven't they haven't nerfed Bone Rush and they haven't nerfed Extreme Speed. So if anything, he's just in the exact same place he was before the way I run him, right? And then if if close combat ends up being significantly better, he's better than he used to be. I don't see this as a nerf at all for me, at least. Anyone who's playing Power Up Punch is obviously going to feel it. Don't forget though, the, the newest character, Mamoswine, is going to have uh, a passive which automatically kills Lucario on sight. So, um, oh, okay. with, that, nice. with that with that yeah. being added to the game, it'll certainly change things. <laughs> That's Absolutely. a joke, yeah. by the way. <laughs> the, the scariest thing to me as a support player whenever I see a Lucario pick is that Lucario has the most flexibility out of any all-arounder in the game. He can either build for insane burst damage and last hitting objectives just by picking power up punch, or he can build for one of the best team fights in the game, which is E-Speed, and you just run into the enemies and destroy them with E-Speed. But depending on how massive the power up punch nerf is, we might actually see the potential to like build some counter comps against E-Speed Lucario's, because if power punch is viable, now you can just assume that he's going E-Speed and pick around it. Whereas before, if you tried to counter a Lucario that was going E-Speed, he'd just pick power up punch and then all of your all your decisions you made before the, the uh, game started are just useless. So this, this might be huge uh, because he might not be nearly as flexible as he was before. And time will certainly tell on that. And we've got a few other changes we're going to talk about, but we'll kind of glance through these a little bit more because they're a little bit more, you know, kind of uh, short form and uh, more so just bug fixes and stuff like that for most Pokemon. So the first Pokemon is Alolan Ninetales. They're going to change how the damage is on uh, Blizzard after it hits an obstacle. And they're also um, going to change its pass or its uh, Unite move, which is fixing a bug where damage wasn't increased against frozen enemies. So now if they're frozen, Snow Globe is going to do more damage. So some small tweaks to Alolan Ninetales. Uh, primarily, people are running Aurora Veil over Blizzard. We'll have to see if this makes any difference there. Um, Aurora Veil is still really, really strong. So, will Blizzard be viable based on, you know, with Alolan Ninetales, based on how the Pokemon are dealing damage from hitting an obstacle? We'll have to see. But uh, that's going to be that for Alolan Ninetales. Um, I know you're excited, Febby. You can talk a little bit about Eldegoss here getting some some buffs. What is going on with that? <laughs> oh, these could be interesting. So, Eldegoss had a bug with Cotton Guard, where sometimes you just wouldn't get as much of the HP uh, back from the shield that was expected. So this actually is going to increase Eldegoss' healing slightly, which is very nice. And, and the Leaf Tornado change, all we know is that the effect of Leaf Tornado has been improved. We don't know anything else. So I'm just, I have a wild imagination, and this could be very interesting. This could be related to move speed. This could be related to Leaf Tornado at the end of the, the move, the Tornado actually lingers and does damage. So it could increase the damage of that or increase how long that Tornado lasts. I, uh, I am very interested in this and my mind is just going wild. I, I'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing what they're actually doing with this. <laughs> I love it. So we'll see what's going on with Eldegoss. Gardevoir is getting uh, a bug fix to its basic attack boosted. Uh, so small changes there for Gardevoir, nothing significant. Um, Storlax, we mentioned already, his uh, yawn is going to be adjusted because sleep is being adjusted in the game. Uh, so now a, sl a slept target will be woken up if taking damage by enemy Pokemon, uh, or opposing Pokemon, rather. Uh, Gengar is going to have a bug fix on its lick, and it's also going to get one of the coolest skins in the game, in my opinion. So there's that. Uh, not really pertaining to the patch notes, but worth mentioning because he's going to go to space like Jeff Bezos. We've got uh, Mr. Mime getting some changes, uh, upgraded barrier, uh, boost the amount of stored barriers to maximum. So as soon as you upgrade it, you get the maximum amount of barriers. And there was a bug related to guard swap, so that's gonna be changed. Um, Crustle's getting a fix on a bug with contact range. I don't, I don't really know what that means, but it might have to do with um, his passive and, and how, like his passive on his Unite, where he's dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. Uh, when they get too close to them, that kind of the secondary effect of Rubble Rouser, um, but just a bug fix on that anyway. Slowbro is getting some tweaks to its basic attacks, fixing a bug on its um, fix a bug which caused special defense of opponents Pokemon to be lowered by basic attack. So that sounds like a nerf. <laughs> and then Surf is going to get a bug fix as well. Macham getting some bug fixes on its Barrage Blow, and then the biggest one and the last one we'll talk about here, and, and actually. Uh, I'll actually go into a practice match to show Blastoise real quick because I think this is important. So we'll jump into Blastoise here in a second. All right, so the last Pokemon uh, that's getting a change in terms of playable characters is Blastoise. 
Uh, Blastoise is getting some bug fixes, which are kind of funny uh, that they're bug fixes. I think that that's the craziest thing, uh, that these were bug fixes all along. But the first one mentions that they're fixing a bug that caused movement speed of opponent's Pokemon to be lowered during rapid spin. Now, we'll have to see if that's rapid spin while water spout or what that ultimately is, but basically they're saying that the opposing Pokemon's movement speed was lowered when you get hit by rapid spin, and that was a bug. And I think the next big thing that we're gonna talk about here is if you guys did not know, while you are rapid spinning, you can water spout and use your basic attack at the same time, and that was a bug. And I'm gonna show you guys the two examples here. I'm gonna throw down a water spout, I'm gonna rapid spin, I'm gonna hold water spout, and I can also do my basic attack auto there with A at the same time, and that was a bug. So you can't do both now, which is gonna increase or decrease the damage that Blastoise is gonna do. Um, that's And that's with Hydro Pump as well. So what do you guys think about that? Yeah, uh, so this is interesting because we actually ran into the opposite issue of this in mobile beta, and when Blastoise came out on Switch, we thought it was a bug in mobile that you couldn't do the water spout rapid spin auto attack thing. So on mobile, there's no way for you to keep channeling water spout while you're auto attacking, so you're using a touch screen and you can't hold the button down while pressing another button because they're kind of right next to each other. Uh, so we just never ran into it, and we thought when it released on Switch that, oh, that was always a capability, we just never pressed the combination, right? I just think they didn't program program it right. So the way I see this evening out in the end is that, you know, the same as mobile beta, you're never going to see Water Spout get picked anymore. It'll always be Hydro Pump. And then the way it plays is kind of along the lines of you Hydro Pump, you start your Rapid Spin, you Hydro Pump, and then you start auto attacking. I also think the bug for the slowdown in the Rapid Spin is because, so Blastoise third auto will slow enemies. I think that was still happening while you were Rapid Spinning and that was unintentional. So we're probably going to see that uh, that effect of a third auto be removed from the Rapid Spin effect. Yeah, no, yeah changes, no changes to a C-Knight move, which I think a lot of people wanted to see, but I think that these couple changes are, are definitely gonna make a big difference. And I, I do kind of like the approach of like, all right, let's, in this case, let's fix the Pokemon of these bugs, which, which we, we'll call a nerf, right? Because it is a nerf, even though it's a bug fix. Um, and then we'll see how things play out after that. But I still think Blastoise is gonna be very strong regardless. Uh, you know, Rapid Spin still burns yeah. objectives. Hydro Pump is still a really good move. Um, his Unite move is yep. still insane and that's not being touched at all. So I still think Blastoise has a lot of viability. I think he and Lucario are probably the top of S tier still after these changes. I think Wiggly drops down, but I think him, Lucario, maybe Eldegoss hold S tier. Yeah, the... The fact that Blastoise has the strong, like, uh, pro I think it's safe to say the strongest Unite move in the game is going to be reason enough to pick him. The, these, this bug fix is not going to matter enough to to just stop picking Blastoise because his Unite is just so insane. That being said, this change actually matters a lot because one of the biggest strategies of the high levels was to just pick Water Spout Rapid Spin, press Fluffy Tail on an objective, and destroy the objective in about three seconds so with this bug fix will make that take a lot longer and you'll actually get punished for picking water spout a lot more because your damage is going to go way down in comparison to hydro pump yeah I so think we're... There's, there's actually a trade-off now yeah i think we're just moving back to the the hydro pump rapid spin blastoise you don't burn objectives as quickly but you still burn them you might still take fluffy tail i don't know but the amount of aoe damage you do is still very high we knew rapid spout did a bit more damage in the long run over hydro pump but it wasn't super super aggressively a ton more damage so i think yeah we're just gonna see a shift to hydro pump i still think blastoise now with probably cinder are the best technical you know like mid lane slash junglers in the game center pathers in the game so we'll see how that plays out in the top level yeah so that's that for blastoise and all the pokemon that are getting changes ultimately when the game uh, the patch drops for mobile we'll have a little bit more insight into exactly how impactful these changes are going to be but uh, i gotta give props finally we get this big patch after all they did was change blissey last time but uh we we know we're getting something really big here and hopefully this shakes things up in the meta game um if you guys have any thoughts or comments you can leave them in the comment section below and keep an eye out on the channel for more updates on what's going down for Pokemon Unite, how these changes are gonna impact the metagame, and we'll probably film a new tier list soon once we have a chance to play with all these new characters. I think we're gonna see some pretty big metagame shifts with this patch. 
I want to thank Feppy and Heat for joining this uh, this little discussion here. They bring a lot of insight and a lot of expertise uh, in various characters, and it's been great to team up with them. So I'll have their information in the description below. I highly recommend you pop into their streams, hang out with us. We're going to be competing in tournaments together and all sorts of great stuff over the coming weeks, months, and hopefully longer than that. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, say, say your final thoughts here, and then uh, we'll, we'll wrap this bad boy up. My pink marshmallow got nerfed. I am sad. <laughs> that is all. Yeah, I'm just excited to see the future of Pokemon Unite. I think these two new characters they're adding, whether it be tomorrow or in the, soon, the near future, are uh, are also going to be game changing. I'm excited to see this meta de develop beyond, beyond you know the, the standard three character, five character picks you see on pretty much every team. So that's what I'm looking most forward to. Spectator mode is coming, which is exciting. I'm just I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. I might switch to mobile. <laughs> that's my outer outro, I guess. I hopefully will not switch to mobile, but we'll see how it goes. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hit that like button down below if you guys did. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and feel free to check out Feppy and Heat and the rest of the Team Shiny Esports squad. I'll put them in the comments or in the description below. And uh, we'll keep you guys posted with the most recent Pokemon Unite news updates and patch changes and more. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dan. I'll also go by A Drive, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.